uh, we've seen U.S. President Barack Obama at the very beginning of this summit, he's already talking a lot about many of the thorny issues of the region. For example, he talked about the South China Sea, talked about the conflicts between China and some of the uh, member countries of ASEAN uh, individually with China. And also he talked about even about the DPRK nuclear issue with the ASEAN leaders, uh, even though that's not necessarily the region that the ASEAN countries are. And also you talk about the trade and economic ties. Uh, is it more of empty talk, do you think? Uh, because so many things are being mentioned, not focused uh, well, or is it likely to be the approach that the U.S. would have toward the ASEAN countries to bring up everything about Asia and talk about it at least? Uh, Mr. Hidarian. Well, right. I mean, they're both symbolic and tangible things that the United States is trying to achieve in this summit. The first thing is that the Obama administration is trying to show that by holding this intimate summit with the ASEAN, uh, and since they held a similar summit with Xi Jinping back in 2013, that the Obama pivot to Asia is a comprehensive engagement with all important actors. So it's not only about China, it's also about the ASEAN and broader East Asia region. But I think it's also about a catch-up. Uh, that uh, the United States is engaging in. I think the U.S. felt that when it comes to economics, it has a lot of catch-up to do. So now that you have the signing of the TPP, the U.S. is looking at, of course, having more uh, ASEAN countries to mm. join along. You have Indonesia, Thailand, and Philippines as a possible next round of negotiation uh, members as far as TPP is concerned. Now on the South Chinese issue, I think the United States really feels a sense of urgency in light of developments in the Spratly chain of islands, in light of the reclamation in the areas. I think Ch United States wants to mobilize maximum possible diplomatic pressure, although indirectly uh, against China. That's why you see a mention on free enough navigation, you see a mention on international law, but right. there's no assurance that countries like Laos or Cambodia, which have very strong relationship with China, will actually agree with Obama on this point. I see. Uh, Professor Wolf, I have to go to you to illustrate and clarify something. We talk about the strategic so-called relations between the United States and ASEAN countries, but also much more important about the trade and economic ties, because the U.S. is now having this called what you call ASEAN Connect, it is a new, totally new mechanism. It's something born after China raised the possibility of Silk Road, you know, one belt, one road. Uh, how should we understand the purpose of this ASEAN Connect? How connected do you think the U.S. would be, trade and economic-wise, with the ASEAN countries, given its current status? Yeah, so, so it's a I think the situation here is as follows. I think the United States very much did feel like it was muscled out of prime position in Southeast Asia, which has been an area of engagement, not always successfully, but major engagement of the United States and a major import area. It's also worth noting that places like Indonesia are among the most important and rapidly growing trading partners for the U.S., even though they're still much smaller than some of the other trading partners, lots of growth there. And it's also a symbolic stand for U.S. influence in Asia. It was the place where we sort of made our stand historically quite often first and last. So it's symbolically important to the United States. I think it's also important to the Obama legacy. So part of what mm. I think you see here is a president who's been very embattled, who's about a year away, who's fighting to secure a legacy. One of the foreign policy successes that can unambiguously be more or less claimed is that American engagement in Asia, the pivot to Asia, was fairly successful. And this is a president who's battered and criticized for being less aggressive in other parts of the world or having misadventures in management, whether that be in the Middle East or other regions with I Russia, see. et cetera. So this is an area of success that he wants to shine a highlight on in the, in the sort of dusk of his presidency as well. Mm. This is the time to look at the pres uh, president's uh, legacy. He only have a uh, less than one year to go, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Yang. Uh, but what do you make of the long-term strategic trade and economic ties between the U.S. and the ASEAN countries, uh, particularly compared to China's relation, if we could do that comparison, uh, with these uh, region, uh, given China's uh, One Belt, One Road <coughs> initiatives? Yeah, it's a really a strategic question, not only to China, uh, not only to the United States, but also to China. Mm. Compared with China's ties, economic ties with ASEAN, uh, the shortcoming between the U.S. and the ASEAN uh, is uh, for um, connect connections. 
for example, we have got uh, FTA arrangement between China and ASEAN. Even Japan, ASEAN, we have a 10 plus one. And other 10 plus one is uh, uh, ASEAN and uh, uh, Korea. Right. However, uh, there haven't been a, some mechanism, no matter it's a connect or whatever, uh, there, haven't, there haven't been a mechanism between ASEAN and the U.S. directly. Although some ASEAN members has become member of the uh, uh, TPP, uh, so I think uh, for for strengthen uh, for the stronger economic ties, uh -huh. the two sides need to set up some connect or mechanism or even FTA arrangement directly rather than indirectly via some TPP or some others. I see.